Welcome back, you're here with Nate's Wait, and this is Crossbeats Production. So this video is obviously the mixing, uh, the next step to the mixing video that I was doing earlier on my channel. Uh, the last video I did, I talked about how I was going to mix this track, and I'd show you the behind the scenes on doing that mix, and also explain to you uh, the purposes of why I do what I do, and uh, so you can understand, I guess, the, the behind the scenes of, of mixing in general. Um, Mixing is a creative process by all means. Um, there's no set of rules by thumb that you can do what you know Like there's no set of rules that you can't do certain things. You can do certain things um, I mean there are certain things that you probably want to do and certain things you don't want to do obviously um, But there's definitely a creative process in mixing. It's not just a set thing where it's static um, And you don't uh, go outside of the box per se of mixing so in general, I just wanted to tell you guys, obviously, when you're mixing your tracks, um, don't get limited by what other people do. Obviously, don't get limited by what I do on my video. Do what's necessary to make your track sound how you want it to sound. By all means, uh, make it yours and and just keep messing around with your craft until you get it how you want it to be in general. So, um, first off, the things that I've kind of set up to, to get this started on the track. Uh, a couple of EQs and some sidechain compression with my bass and my kick. At this stage, I'll explain to you the certain things that I've done, the th certain things that I haven't done, and I'll just go over and re reiterate some, some key features to this track as well. So I've done some editing with the actual track, the midsection of the track, um, and pretty much just got that to sound how I want to sound and you know messed around with it a bit more in machine. Um, I'll play some of that out to you now so you can hear it. Sorry, let's go get rid of that stinking cricket. It's really annoying the crap out of me. Hang on a second. We're back. So, so um, basically with the track, um, as I was saying to you before, I've pretty much set it up in a static mix. If you watched my previous video, you'd know what's going on with this track. But if you haven't watched it, I'll just quickly explain it to you. So what a static mix is, is basically your tracks are set up the way you want them to somewhat sound without adding any EQ, compression, effects, anything like that, unless the effect is a part of the track, of course. Um, so pretty much what I did was set this up so I could have it sounding somewhat close to how I liked it, and uh, everything is kind of level, leveling at the right levels and things like that. Um, there's another thing, obviously, within mixing, and there's so many different features in mixing that you, you kind of got to get head around. If you're new to mixing in general, um, just try and pay attention to the, the EQ and the compression moves that I do and just try and understand that all of the things that I'm doing in this track are for creative processes. They're not because I, I feel like I have to add an EQ or I feel like I have to add a compressor compressor to the track. It's more or less uh, to get it to a creative stage where I like it to sound. So uh, just bear that in mind when you're, when you're watching these videos. But anyway, let me just set this up and I'll just start going through a few things here and we'll get this underway. So give me a second while I do that. So first off, what I'll do is um, show you the drums, okay? So I'll explain to you what I've done with the drums and explain to you how I've set this up. So first off, I've color-coded everything as you can see. I color-coded the drums in blue, the most bulk of the drums, and then there's a second part of the track where it's got another section of drums in there in that orangey kind of gold color. Not gold, but whatever you want to call it, orange, I guess. Um, and then I've got a few other instruments within this, a Rhodes Keys, a piano, and a reverse piano, another reverse piano, and the bass uh, on the track there. So with those tracks, as you can see, they're all set up like that and they're color coding, and that really helps to find your tracks, especially when you're uh, trying to mix them and there's a lot of tracks in, in, this, in the mix. But um, there's there's quite a number of tracks in this mix. There's not more than I've seen before. I've seen tracks with uh, mixes with a load more tracks, and there's probably double or triple the amount of tracks. And they're they're really difficult to mix because you got to try and squeeze in spaces for certain things in the instruments, and certain things have got to fit places, and some things over over um, I guess mask other things in the in the mix. So for example, when I talk about masking, okay, so. The first thing I listen for in in a static mix is I get my levels to what I what I like to hear, said like how I said before how I like to hear them, and uh, then I listen for things that are masking each other. So um, generally, what I would do to to first off start this uh, process is I've got a Rhodes labeled here, and I've put a piano also on the other cue. Let me just pin this to the notes board here. This is going to be a, a multiple part section video, just so you know. 
Uh, so I've got the... Pretty sure I labeled them right. Find out in a second. Yeah, so Rhodes keys. Okay, so I'll pin that pin that to the screen there and uh I'll just get this other neutron plug in and I'll pin that like I did already. Okay. So <laughs> Alright, so we've got the Rhodes and the piano set up so you can see on the masking meter what's happening here. Now the reason why I'm showing you this plugin is because it's got a fantastic feature on it which is called the masking feature. It shows you, in a visual sense, what is happening when masking is happening. Now, in my estimation, the piano and the roads, the low end is being masked, and probably a part of the top end is being masked as well. Um, this video, I'm probably going to have to break into several sections of mixing um, this track, but I want to show you first off what I would look for and how I would see if there's a masking going on with the track. Actually, let me just quickly set my preferences to a little bit higher bit. Uh, sample rate because um, the computer down there CPU is going a bit schizo. All right, <clears throat> so um, first off, like I said, I always kind of put my track into mono so I don't have issues with my room because my room's not the best for mixing uh, tracks in, and especially when it's in stereo, it makes it a lot harder to hear what's going on. You get reflections everywhere. I just prefer to have mono, and I, I listen to it at a low volume where I can talk over the track and not have to yell or raise my voice. Um, and that's kind of the way I, I've been mixing for a long time, and, and I've got good results when doing it. So um, I've been must of mastering, uh, I've done mastering on several pretty much uh, high high end tracks, and they've come out really well doing doing that. So anyway, nonetheless, let me just quickly show you the masking meter. Excuse me, there. I just had some had to have some water. Um, I don't have my camera on at the moment because it's just um, a bit more trouble to set up. Anyway, so we'll get the um, the masking meter and I'll show you how that works so you understand what's going on. So what I'll do, I'll solo the piano and the roads. Let's move this down here for a second because the piano comes in at about... Yeah, just there. Alright, so we've got the piano that comes in around about here with the Rhodes keys and we'll just watch what's happening with the masking meter. I don't actually have to turn that on, I'll just turn that off so you can see that. Alright, so let's watch this meter here and just pay attention to what happens with it and you'll see how the um, the masking is going on around here. Alright, so as you can see, with the masking meter, it's fantastic because if you're learning how to mix, I reckon this tool alone is probably worth your money alongside maybe Ozone uh, 7 if you're using Ozone for mastering. But this tool teaches you a lot about where your tracks are going to have issues and things like that with masking and, and compression. Everything that you can think of to do with the mix, EQ, compression, exciting, and transient, um, it, it does all that. So, um, if you're if you're learning mixing and you want to learn certain things about frequencies, for example, if you want to learn where the key of A is on the frequency of 217 hertz, then you know where that is. You move that down. Obviously, it shows you each each key, each note, and it helps you understand where you're at with the um, with the EQ. I mean, when I saw this plugin, I'm not to boast about it or anything like that, but when I saw this plugin, I really, really was amazed by how well um, it could help somebody learning to mix, uh, teach them. It's like basically having an engineer with you um, without having them with you. So um, enough of that, enough of the sales pitch. But anyway, that's that's not my problem selling selling this thing. I don't I don't get anything from it. So um, I just wanted to show you how the masking feature really helps you discover. Uh, where where you're having issues with your track now Every part of the track if it has masking effects happening on the track It doesn't mean necessarily that that's a bad thing um, You have to understand that some masking is good and some masking is bad. There's just I guess You have to decide where the the lesser of two evils come into play So when I was looking at the piano before I even put this meter on because my ears 
no now i've been doing this for about six years or maybe five years or so i don't know what it is now but um i've been doing this long enough to know that certain frequencies and when i hear them and when i hear masking going on i can i can just hear it and especially when i i put this into mono i cranked it in mono not cranked it but i didn't turn it up too loud but i, I put it in mono turned it up so i could listen to it at an enjoyable level um and i could hear the masking even when I had it at really decently low volume levels, I could hear the masking with the piano, the bass, the kick, and every, anything that had low in, low end in it, I could hear that. Even with top end frequencies, I can hear the masking effect that's happening with it. But um, I just wanted to point out to you that this this happens with your mix when you're introducing a lot of low end uh, tracks and things like that. So, um, so. Okay, so what would I do in the case where I've got a piano and I've got a Rhodes keys that are interfering with each other? Now, how do I work around that? Okay, so say for example I got the Rhodes and I use the track assistant, which I could do that to to um, to EQ my my Rhodes keys, and I might just do that now. Let me just play it. Okay, I'll play it with the track assistant where it's chosen EQ, compression, and excitation. Now I'm going to play that and we'll see how that's worked and, and compare the two. Okay, so the moves that it chose with the Rhodes keys, I probably wouldn't have done those. Um, it's chose it's chosen a, a shelf and it's increased the low end, which is not what I would have done. Um, but nonetheless, um, that's what it's done there, and it's increased some of the top end frequencies. I guess that's fine if you're looking at it as an individual um, instrument, but when you're looking at it as an entire mix, you probably don't want to do the feet the things that it's done on this. So let me just take off compression, take off that for now and we'll just play with the EQ and see what we can do and I'll just reset that EQ and we'll start from scratch now I'll do the things that I think actually let me just try this it's on broad clarity uh, so let me just try this and we'll try the aggressive just quickly I just want to see what it's going to do Maybe, okay, I still see that there's some masking going on down the low end frequencies. Um, maybe it has brought out some of the, the more top end stuff that I wanted, but again, I'm not too sure about that. It sounds like it's a bit choked to me. So anyway, let's um, let's just see what the frequencies that it's chosen and um, boost those for a second and see how we go. That's some pretty insane stuff there. Uh, minus 6 dB, yeah, that's feasible. All right, so I'll just play this without the piano on it and uh, let's just see what the road sounds like somewhat okay yeah I'm not too sure about those things but anyway let's see what we can do with the EQ
All right, so I mean, you can see there's a lot of masking happening with the piano and the Rhodes keys. So how do you avoid situations like this? Now, I guess you've got to decide between what's more important with the instruments there. Picking between the two, I'm obviously going to look at what's featured more on the track and what needs to be in place of that at the time. Um, obviously, the piano doesn't come in too much. It's kind of only a one section there. I'll just actually close this off for a second. Uh, it's got, well, okay, so it comes in this part of the track, it's quite quite loud there, and then it's just in sections of the track at the end there as well, in the midsection of the track. So I guess I've got to decide there, how am I going to feature the piano? What am I going to do with the roads? Maybe I could uh, automate some of the volume and things like that. But personally, you want the roads to sound, because the roads is basically the feature of the entire track, you want the roads to sound somewhat um, decent throughout the entire mix. Uh, so I guess looking at the roads keys, I'm going to be really careful on how I EQ the roads and, and kind of work around that. Now, I don't know about this 4 dB increase there because that's going to steal away some of my vocal space if I have vocals. And that's one thing that I'm looking at on this track is because it's going to have, eventually it's going to have a wrap on the track and I want to put vocals on there. So I've got to decide where I'm going to have that and where that's going to fit in the track and things like that. So I mean, looking at this EQ, I'll just quickly mess around with it for a bit and I'll play with it and we'll see how we go. All right, so to me that sounds feasible. Uh, I don't want to make this video too long because this is going to be in a series on my channel. So I might start ending this up at this point, but I just want to quickly explain to you the kind of things that I do to attack my mix and how I go about certain things like that. As I said, this video is going to be split into several parts. So stay tuned on my channel. You'll see a lot more of these mixing videos come through and um, eventually I'll get to the um, the full completion of the mix with you guys and hopefully you'll take something out of this and hopefully you'll learn certain techniques about mixing within the creative space of mixing so um, to end this this part of the video off I'll just get to the end of that I'll quickly show you some features to do with the um, the piano and and the uh, roads and how I would normally split them apart within the mix and how I would EQ them and compress them in the next video um, but uh, for this first one, I didn't want to go too far into depth with, with the whole uh, mixing process. I wanted to explain to you the static mix, um, the behind the, the scenes of how I would set that up. And in, in that sense, once I've got that set up, then how I would start choosing my EQ and my compression moves and possibly saturation, possibly uh, distortion, whatever suits the track, whatever is needed on the track. So uh, let, me, let me get into that in the next uh, part of this series that I'm going to go through and I'll explain that in more depth and we'll go from there but otherwise remember to like thumbs up give me a subscribe on the channel and uh, keep posting your comments and things like that so I can look out for those and hopefully um, reach you guys within the comments and, and get back to you with other things that are helpful on, on mixing so otherwise I'll let you go on this one and peace